Okay, I'm going to let you in on a Hollywood secret now. Generally, when big movie stars have a new film to publicize, they agree to do media interviews in which they grit their teeth and reluctantly answer a few personal questions. But in this interview, with a newly married and clearly very much in love, George Clooney, there appears to be no such tension at all. ABC's Nick Watt tonight on Clooney and his highly anticipated new movie, Tomorrowland. The Cloonies are this spring's A couple. Forget Kim Ye or Bay J. Jamal are so hot right now. Did you see them at the Met Ball? George, I made the mistake of being in Venice when you got married. I'm very sorry. I was shooting a travel show completely unrelated, <laughs> and everybody came up to us with a kid, and they were like, a Georgia Clooney. Well, it was funny because we'd not told anybody where we were getting married, and it was just thousands of people out and it was crazy and then i was like you know what this is what it's going to be like for the next three days i'm, I'm surprised saying. she didn't leave you there uh, i believe me actually it was right in the middle of the ebola scare and it was all this bad news and people were really in a good mood for that and so it made it fun for all of us it wasn't really annoying to have your private moment no because we inside where we got married we were able to just keep it the the hundred of us so you didn't you don't have any really good video of me dancing which was uh, terrible. Yeah. Well, as I say, you ruined my shoot. Then. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry that my wedding, my happiness, ruined your travel. <laughs> there is Tomorrowland castmates, Tim Sorry. McGraw and Britt Robertson. Sorry. Who are you, kid? Clooney is actually kind of cantankerous in the movie, but real life, he's the witty matinee idol and his better half, Amal, is a human rights lawyer of global renown. My next door neighbor is a brain surgeon. He says, Nick, what did you do today? And I said, I did a story about a lady with 85 Christmas trees. When you leave for work in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I was shooting in New York, strapped into a bomb vest, and I'd come home. My wife has just come back from uh, Strasbourg, where she was in the middle of a trial over the Armenian genocide, and asks me about my day. And I was like, <laughs> I, I, I had the fake bomb strapped on me. And everything she does has actual consequence, <laughs> you know? She's a proper person. Yes, she's doing is. a proper job. <laughs> yes. And dare I say it, George? I am not. <laughs> what if there was a place? Dad, I just need you to look at this. Does it look weird? A secret place. Invitation that never went out. His latest project, Tomorrowland, a movie that defies categorization. The pen. I've never. <laughs> Eagerly anticipated, highly secretive. How much are you allowed to actually tell me about this film? Well, listen, nobody's stopping us. No, I mean. Everyone dies in the end. Not true. Clooney plays a disillusioned dreamer in what the director describes as a sci fi action adventure road movie fable made by Walt Disney, our parent company. We're not being mysterious to be mysterious. We're being mysterious because we don't want to tell the story before they see the film. Country star Tim McGraw plays dad to Britt Robertson, an optimistic dreamer recruited to save our planet. Have you actually seen, I it? seen it? You haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. He hasn't. No. Well, should we tell him he's, he's not in it? That's not great. <laughs> <laughs> and that you're completely framed out of this shot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't want to give too much away. It's entertaining, thought-provoking, and surprising. Get How is this a good idea? You turn on the television, there's an awful lot of doom and gloom out there. There really is. It feels like that's actually what the whole world is. Your future doesn't have to be this. There's a, the ability to be involved and make a difference. When I saw that in the script, I thought that was a really good thing. We have to go! In this movie, he plays second fiddle to an 11-year-old who is a kind of dark Disney character called Athena. She stole the screen from you a little bit. Of course she did. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why they tell you don't work with kids and animals, <laughs> right? Isn't that the rule? She's full of surprises. She is perfect for that character, and we were just thanking the movie gods that she managed to get in front of us. There's also Britt, who really wanted this role. I sent in tapes, and I auditioned for Brad, and then I went back in for the casting director. I went back in for Brad. He didn't remember me at all. <laughs> and then, it's flattering. Yeah, right. Like, and I hear you love being called the next big thing. Oh, it's my favorite thing. No, I mean, I, I don't mind it. It just doesn't really mean anything to me. There's another great kid who plays the young Clooney character. I'm not giving up. The kid who plays you. Yeah. Is that actually your kid? <laughs> no, here's what we did, though. We found a kid looked enough like me and we had him get a little bit of plastic surgery. Good idea. 
We told him you want to be in show business, you got to pin those ears back. <laughs> and you got to shorten up that nose. I don't know what you looked like as a kid, but probably I was a like blonde. That. Well, that's what originally what I was signed on to play. <laughs> Me as a younger man. As a younger man. <laughs> Have you been working out? You're looking rather buff. I'm trying to stretch a few more years out of my career. Because not everybody looks like George, so, you know, yeah. I could. Back to the movie. The Tomorrowland of the title is a parallel world and image of an ideal future from a 1964 perspective. Hovering monorails and leather suits. Not the future we're now in. When we were kids, we weren't dreaming about staring at a phone in our hands. <laughs> I have three daughters, and I would like to see their faces occasionally, because that's all I see is yeah. this. Clooney doesn't do that. Clooney doesn't do Twitter. I think it may be the dumbest thing a famous person, a famous actor, mm -hmm. could do. Because there is nothing to gain from it. People aren't, mm -hmm. More people aren't going to go see your movies. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if they did, then Kim Kardashian would be the biggest movie star in the world. I'm saying, for me, mm -hmm. uh, the only thing that could happen is bad. Right? I have two <laughs> drinks, I go home, <laughs> and I make a Mother <laughs> Teresa joke. <laughs> and I wake up in the morning, and my career is over. So, thank goodness he's sticking to the acting. Popping up in gems like this, a movie that I'm still thinking about and unraveling five days after I saw it. I'm Nick Watt for Nightline in Los Angeles. Our thanks to Nick Watt and to George Clooney tonight. Tomorrowland opens in theaters May 22nd. <laughs>